Hi everybody, it's Carolina here from the Oak Bluffs Public Library and it is time for a Cooking with Carolina. I would like to thank the Library Friends of Oak Bluffs for sponsoring this program and today we are going to make some chickpea patties aka falafel. So for this it is a recipe where they are not deep fried which is very exciting to me. It comes from a cookbook called the Blue Zones Kitchen, which if you watched last week, I made a banana ice cream from here that was very interesting and tasty, so I'm willing to try another from it. This says, these falafel inspired patties are full of flavor and spice, but are lighter and easier to make as they aren't deep fried. Oh good, this had the information I was interested in the other day, I found it again. Okay. The largest certified Blue Zones community in the United States, Fort Worth, started on its Blue Zones project journey in 2014. More than 300 businesses and organizations have signed on to improve the health of their employees and customers, and nearly 90,000 residents are involved in the movement. Since 2014, hi Abdelayla. Since 2014, Fort Worth has seen dramatic improvements, a 31% decrease in smoking, a 17% increase in people exercising three times a week, and important gains in overall well-being and life satisfaction. This part floored me. In the past five years, Fort Worth has moved from 185th to 31st healthiest city in the nation. So I thought that was pretty impressive. So this recipe comes from their chef Sandra Lewis, Life at the Table, Blue Zones Project Fort Worth, Texas. So here we go. We start with two cups dry chickpeas. If you're using dried, you have to place them in a large bowl, cover them with six cups water, soak them overnight drain well. But I'm using canned, and so we use four 15 ounce cans of chickpeas, aka garbanzo beans. So we will open those up. Off track. Okay, so there we have our four cans. Now we want to drain the excess liquid out of these. So drain them, but it is not necessary to, <clears throat> to rinse them. Alrighty, so now we will be putting those chickpeas into a food processor. So we'll add all four cans of the chickpeas. Careful with the tin. Okay, that's a lot. A lot of chickpeas. Now, we will put five garlic cloves 
Ooh, yucko. Some moldy garlic. That's okay, I have backup. And these you can just throw in there whole. That's the great thing about using the food processor. No chopping involved, for the most part. Today it would have actually been a good day to do something baked. I don't usually like to do baked things in the summer because it's always too hot but it's been super cool the last two days here in, on Martha's Vineyard in the low 70s too cold I don't like it I need my summer all of it All right, so there are five cloves of garlic. Now for this, uh, we do have to use it. We do have to do a little cutting. So it says half a sweet onion, but this onion is quite small. I'm just gonna throw the whole thing in there. And this is just a sweet yellow onion. Nothing fancy. And just take off those extra skins on the outside that are tough. Get off me! All right, there we go. Now one cup cilantro and one cup parsley. For this, we will just guesstimate. That is not quite a cup. Boy, you could use a bigger food processor. I am a little concerned about this. We'll, uh, we'll see. Not much of big stuff still has to go in, so let's hope it's okay. No overflow. Okay, so there was about a cup of cilantro. And now we will do about a cup of parsley. Now I got the flat leaf parsley, which I actually typically get the curly parsley. It's feeling a little wild today, I guess. It seems like the fancier recipes use flat leaf, so I was, I was feeling fancy. Okay, here we are. Full to the brim here. Luckily now it's just spices. And it'll grind down. So, now we have three teaspoons of ground cumin. Here is my cumin. Here are my teaspoons. teaspoons ground coriander there's one two one teaspoon salt One eighth of a teaspoon ground cardamom. One eighth. 
I don't even have a measure that small, so we'll just get like a little, a little smidge of it. I'll use my quarter measure and fill that about halfway. Okay. Half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm not gonna measure that out, I'm just gonna guess. which I thought was very interesting, is one tablespoon of baking powder. So that's kind of a lot. I feel like this must be this, the secret ingredient to make it all work really well. Now, I'm not a super huge falafel fan, but for some reason I've just been craving it lately. So when I saw this recipe, I knew it was meant to be. my falafel destiny. Okay, so there we are. And make sure you use baking powder, not baking soda. Now, we take this and we grind. Now, actually normally when I grind with this thing, or with the blender. I use ear protection. Nope. Well, that's not good. What seems to be the problem here? Is it too full? want to stop it from time to time to do some scraping and it specifically says do not add water to this mixture mixed in.
like when you pulse it, like that, it kind of fluffs it up and makes it. Plus, it's just kind of fun. It's like revving your engine, which of course I would never do. We'll try to get some of that onion down there just for a little more moisture, which will help it blend faster. Kind of slow going here, huh? Blending's not easy, but it's necessary. when you don't have enough liquid in there it just kind of keeps blending and blending and blending the same thing <laughs> hence the frequent scraping I can see why it specifically says not to add water because you're definitely very tempted to add some water here. But patience, patience. exciting to watch me watch things blend so I uh, I appreciate you sticking with me and am I yelling I'm probably yelling oh I 
think it did get one onion. All right, we're getting there. We can do this. It's a very peanut buttery consistency. parsley and cilantro getting mixed in. That's a good sign. Let's try to get that onion down by the blade.
as you can see, this recipe definitely requires a lot of patience. And I think it's really good I'm wearing the ear protection because this would be not really great for your ears to take so much of this grinding noise. super fully ground, but we'll see if it works. We'll see if it can handle being a little chunky. So now we will heat a medium skillet over high heat. For some reason, I always have to do that with my stove. It takes a little cajoling and you want to wait for the skillet to get hot. Oh, I guess I could take those off now. Okay. Take this, woo! That's a little hot, careful. Clean up your scraps. Now, with your clean hands, you're going to make, it's nice and warm, you're going to make patties that are about a quarter inch thick. So not terribly thick. And it is a little sticky. It says, If it doesn't hold together, grind it further. Well, it's definitely holding it together, so I, I think we're okay there. It is sticky. Very sticky. Very pasty. Like, seriously. And the green. Okay, we'll start with just these three and see how we do. I'm gonna rinse my hands off. Oops. 
And now we will add oil to generously coat the pan and create a thin layer. So we're using olive oil. Ooh, definitely hot pan. Hot pan, hot pan. I guess that's about as good as it gets. When the oil is hot, gently add the falafel patties to the skillet. Cook for a total of around four minutes two minutes on each side or until browned. Now, it doesn't say to turn it down, so that makes me a little nervous, but we'll see how it goes. I'll do what it says. Careful for any popping. You can kind of pat them down once they're in there. To get to your desired thickness. And now leave them alone. Now you can see them in there. Here you can see how pasty it is. Hopefully it's a tasty pasty. And it's definitely a poppin', so careful. There's gonna be some cleanup involved after this. So you still are frying in some oil, but just not as much oil as you normally would with a falafel patty. And for some reason, I always thought of falafel as like having breadcrumbs mixed in, but it does not. Or at least this recipe doesn't. I'm not sure if other falafel recipes do. I've only made falafel from a mix before. Okay, so there we have our two minutes. And it does not seem to be very easy to flip. does kind of want to fall apart, so. Woo! Gotta do it quick. Maybe if I did like an egg next time, I'd just use the frying pan action. Yeah, they tend to spread a little bit here. Now we'll try two minutes on this side. And then we'll give it a taste test. So while that side is cooking, we will cut up some onion, onion, some lemon, which it says to put on the side. Lemon wedges for serving. I'm going to wash the onion off my knife. Take care not to set off your smoke detector. It is a little uh, smoky from the frying. All right, we have about one more minute to go. Get a plate. your wedge. Perhaps a spot of garnish. And there we go. Let's uh, turn this off and give these a whirl. So I will say already, kind of difficult to make because it's not staying together as well as I would have liked, despite following the directions. To a T. So, perhaps a spot. 
lemon here. It says to serve in a sandwich or on top of a sturdy salad with a squeeze of lemon. Kind of annoying to make, but it does taste really delicious. So hot. Mmm, yummy. It is really good. I recommend. It is very, very tasty. I like it. Other than falling apart when you're trying to flip it, other than that, I think it's a winner. So, thank you for joining me. I will see you next Friday at 5 for Cooking with Carolina. Bye.